and welcome to Murphy's Garden. It's now the end of August, just about to head into September and there's still quite a lot of colour in this border um, behind me. So what I want to do in this, in this video is to look at what are the best performing perennials in the borders, what are the showstoppers that keep the colour going right into um, late autumn and into the start of winter. So I'm going to look at my top 12 perennials. Um, these are ones that I grow in my garden and that I find to be um, really good doers. So we're going to move about the garden. A lot of the plants are in this border because this border is doing particularly well, but we'll move about the garden and look at various plants and their merits. Okay, the first one on my list, this is Helenianthus. Um, it's a tall one. It's, um, as you can see, it can grow sort of from one metre to 1.5 metres. So it's definitely something that needs to be back of border. Um, it's got these um, large vein leaves, um, which are quite attractive, and then yellow flowers uh, with a slightly darker yellow centre to them. So Helenianthus is in the aster family, and the Heli Helianthus, the Helios part of the word, the Greek meaning means sun, so that tells you that it likes to be in full sun, which it is here. Um, it grows very nicely with them. Um, it looks yellow and purple look very nice together. So we've got it growing here with some Verbena bonariensis. We've got some Cosmos there and also this um, Amistad, Salvia Amistad, which we'll come on to later. So um, it opens late summer, probably opened in the last sort of two weeks and it will flower right into the first frost. So it is um, a really good one for a late summer border. So this is second on my list. This is um, Eupatorium. Maculatum atropurium. It's a really easy to grow perennial. It's very unfussy, doesn't really mind its conditions. It does like um, sun or part shade. It's growing full sun here. It grows to about one and a half meters in height, just up to my shoulder here. Um, and it's got this very attractive purple stem with um, sort of purple veined leaves, which look quite attractive in themselves. And then the flower head. Um, it's got this lovely purple, dark purple flower head, which kind of turns fluffy as the season goes on, but it's a really good doer and it um, looks good back of border. Nice contrast against, like here we've got it with this um, hydrangea limelight and the colours look really good. It also looks quite good with um, um, sort of yellows and, and other colours, which we've got it here. Um, and again, the echinacea behind, it's the same sort of tone as that. So again, that looks quite good too. So this is a, a one I'd really recommend. So this is number three on my list. This is Salvia Amistad, which I mentioned earlier. This is a really invaluable perennial, one which I wouldn't be without. It's, um, it flowers um, sort of from June right the way through to the first frost. Although I'd say the flowers do look better as the season goes on. So they're looking at their best from sort of August onwards. Looks lovely um, with sort of early frost and things as it starts to fade. It's quite tall again, another tall one. Um, um, it's not always hardy. It's hardy sort of up to the very hardest of winters. It may not make it through if you get a very um, cold, wet winter. But generally I find that if you mulch it um, when it's finished flowering, if you mulch around it, it generally protects it and it will make it through the winter. So it's got these um, tall, spiky, um, purple, deep purple flowers, which are absolutely loved by the bees. There are other varieties um, which come in like, um, I think I had one which was a kind of peachy color but they didn't seem to be as hardy as this one. This one um, seems to be, for me, the most reliable. I have got this growing um, in a container, in two containers at the front, and um, I do think that was quite so successful because it's quite a big plant. It has a tendency to sort of fall over if it's battered by the wind. So I think it works well sort of with other plants around it to sort of hold it up. So what I will do with the plants that are in the in the tubs, I'll, I'll move them and put them into a big, to create a bigger clump in the, in the borders. So being a salvia, it's in the um, sage family or the lamacia family. So it's got these um, very attractive, tall, um, spiky flower heads, which are very attractive to um, bees. So um, it's, a, it's a really good plant that I wouldn't be without. So as an insurance policy, it's a good idea just to take a cutting from this plant, just in case the um, parent plant succumbs to the cold weather. And this is one I did earlier in the year. So this is um, number four on my list. This is a new plant for me. This is the first time I've grown it. It's called uh, Gora lindimeri, um, also known as whirling butterflies. And it's so pretty, I absolutely love it. 
This is a typically a prairie plant um, found in um, Texas and South Louisiana. It likes um, fertile but free draining soil, which is what I've got here. So it's an upright herbaceous perennial. It produces these sort of um, lance-like shaped leaves like that. It grows for about 80 centimetres in height. Um, and it's just really good with um, grasses and um, just gives that very light airy feel. I grew this from seed and I grew quite a lot and I just sort of planted them, um, spot planted them all over the borders, which it doesn't actually look that good like this. It's far better growing in um, large drifts with grasses. So for that reason, we're, we've got some ideas for next year. We're gonna um, put it in another area, lots and lots of it to create massive impact. We did go to one of the RHS um, gardens this year, RHS Hyde Hall in Essex and saw this planted en masse and it looked absolutely spectacular and that's sort of when I fell in love with it and definitely want to grow more of this next year. And the other thing to mention about this, it has won an RHS Award of Garden Merit and one of the reasons for that is because it's got this really long flowering season so although I've chosen it as a plant that looks good in autumn, it will flower from spring, so from May right the way through to the first frost, so a really really good doer. So while we're on the subject of the Gora, um, as I say, I've got plans for this in another area and I just think it looks so lovely. This is a grass, um, a Melenia grass, this one's called Melenia. Uh, Carulia Strathquill and it's got this these kind of purple um, seed head so I just wanted to do um, to see what that looks like together and I think it would look really lovely just blowing in the breeze so an area down this part of the garden I think we're going to try and do that um, for next year I think that would look really nice. So late summer and early autumn wouldn't be the same in the garden without hydrangea. Hydrangea are one of my favourites and this is um, hydrangea paniculata limelight um, hydrangea comes from the Greek hydra meaning water and angion meaning um, uh, water vessel and it's referring to the sort of cup-like appearance of the flower heads. I don't really know that they do look like cups but anyway that's what the Greeks think so that's why it's called hydrangea. So we've got this one um, which is lovely. I love these kind of it's like a big ice cream you just want to lick it. I've got this one and then we've got um, the other hydrangeas behind me so we'll just um, go and have a look at those. So this one behind me and in front of me is the hydrangea macrophilia or the mop head. Um, so hydrangeas do well best in um, light shade if you can find if you can find it. If it is in full sun, it can tolerate full sun, um, but as long as the soil is moist, if you get a lot of sun, they do just sort of flop and they flop quite quickly. But um, the clump um, just over there in the garden does tend to just drop down if it gets very hot. So. If you can give them a little bit of light shade, they do do better. So some people are a bit unsure with um, pruning of hydrangeas. So the macrophilia ones, these ones, are best pruned late spring. So don't do it too early because it's the flower heads that will protect it from the frost. But the paniculata, the limelight one, can be pruned harder and can be pruned earlier. And you tend to take it much lower down, whereas these ones you just prune off the, the spent flower heads. So number six on my list is Echinacea purpurea. Um, this is an erect clump forming perennial that looks really good back of border, it loves full sun. It's called Echinacea, coming from Echinos meaning hedgehog, Greek meaning hedgehog for obvious reasons. So this conical centre is really spiky so that's why a bit like Echinops or um, it's got this spiky, um, spiky part of the flower which is where it gets the hedgehog part of the, of the name. So it um, grows to about 0 0.5, half a metre. Um, plus and um, looks really good um, back of border. I love the colours, it comes in lots of different varieties, there's lots of different colours, um, some of the, um, the petals are pushed back further, there's all different sorts of varieties but definitely worth exploring and I think I definitely want to have some more in my borders. And the other nice thing about it is quite it dries really well and it also produces these lovely seed heads so it's great for flower arranging and it's also good in the um, winter borders if you just leave the spent flower heads they look really architectural in the frost so for number seven i've chosen this ornamental grass this is miscanthus Yakushima dwarf. It's not that dwarf like, it has got quite big, in fact bigger than I thought, but it is lovely. It's got these leaves um, which have got the white stripe um, variegation through them and then it produces these kind of flower 
um, stems from about um, late August onwards and they look lovely all winter. This, this plant really, really um, stands out as a, as a centre point to this border. It does look really lovely. So I really recommend Miscanthus. It's a lovely, lovely grass. So this is number eight, I think we're on to on my list. And this is uh, Lobelia expicosa. I think this one's called Fan Burgundy. I'm, I'm not sure because it doesn't look that burgundy. It looks more purple to me. But this is a, um, a, a perennial Lobelia um, and it really looks fantastic. I think I put this in possibly last year or the year before. Didn't really, hasn't really done much until this year and it's got, getting quite big and I just think it looks spectacular. It's um, about 90 centimetres in height and it started flowering probably about two weeks ago. So it's from sort of mid, early to mid August and it will go right through to um, the late autumn. So I think this is a, another one that's a really good plant for the border. I love this colour, it just looks really striking, really stands out and really pops in the border. So number nine on my list, this is another top favourite, one I wouldn't be without. This is um, Achillea, also known as Yarrow. Um, it's named Achillea after the Greek warrior Achilles because he used the um, extract of it to stem the flow of blood on the battlefield apparently. But this one is lovely. It's got this, all comes in lots of different colours from yellow to a rusty burnt orange, all sorts of colours. This one's this lovely blush pink. Um, it's got these very flat flower heads, which also dry very well, so really good for flower arranging. And here, the two together, the, the um, Echinacea and the Achillea just look super together. Um, this is one that you can leave um, throughout the winter and just cut back in spring or cut back in the autumn if it starts to flop a bit. But it's um, a very reliable um, plant, also loved by pollinators, so very worth having in the border. So number 10 on my list are Helleniums, and this is a good clump of um, Helleniums in front of me. They grow to about a metre in height. They're called Helleniums, they've got the H-E-L part of the word, it comes from Helios, again meaning sun, um, and this is in full sun, and that tells you that they like those, that condition of, of full sun. Um, they come in lots of different colours. What I like about them, the colours that they come in tend to be very warm tones, so oranges, burnt orange is ready colour. I think this one's called Moorhem Beauty and this one's Carmen. So they've, they add a nice warmth to the late autumn border. Um, and it's only when you get up close to them like I am now, because they're quite tall, so they tend to be back of border. Um, but when you are up close to them, you see how, how delicate and how pretty the individual flowers are, particularly this one. And while I'm standing here, it's just covered in insects, lots of bees, hum, uh, a hive of activity, lots and lots of insects from even ladybirds to um, lots of bumblebees. So that's really good as well. So another good addition to the border. So number 11 on my list is um, Verbena bonariensis. Um, as those of you who've watched the videos before, I've got a bit of a love-hate relationship with this. I do absolutely love it when it's in flower. It's lovely, but for me, it does self-seed everywhere in the border. So I am pulling it out, and as long as you manage it and, and take out any unwanted seedlings in, in spring, it's fine. But it's a lovely plant because it's, um, it's self-supporting. It's got these tall stems, they're very strong stems, and they withstand the wind. It looks really good sort of with them. Um, with grasses and, and um, just um, to add a sort of airiness to the border. So that's why I've included it. And I really like it here with the yellow daisy behind. It looks really, really lovely. I've got the Amistad in front. So I think it's one that I wouldn't be without, even though I do um, deadhead, not deadhead, um, pull out a lot of the seedlings um, in the spring. I certainly don't want it everywhere. So last but not least, number 12 on my list is Persicaria bistorta superba. And this is one that we've just planted um, probably, I don't know, maybe about a month or so ago. And although a lot of the perennials that we've included have been big, tall, kind of architectural plants, this is a bit more subtle. This is one that does very well um, and provides good ground cover. Um, so you've got this dense covering of, of green leaves with these kind of bottle brush, um, subtle pink um, flower heads, which look lovely. So this has done very well for us. We only planted it recently and already it's, it's doing well. And we've got it planted here in the front with um, it's this lovely euchre which has got the purple veins which um, is brought out by the pink of the flower so that looks really good also very good for planting over bulbs so it just um, hides the sort of untidiness as the bulbs die back so that's all um, that's all the um, there's certainly not exhausted list but um, some really good ones there that are worth trying and, and for me um, do well in this garden thank you very much for watching <laughs>
and um, join us in the next video. If you do want to see more of the garden, we've um, opened an Instagram account, so just click on the link below. So Murphy, Murphy, time to go and get some lunch. Off we go. Bye-bye.